We all face crossroads, crucial times in our lives where decisions are not easy, critical moments in which we can either step up and take charge of our futures or fall to mediocrity. At age 33, Pernell Whitaker has faced many of these moments. He broke onto the scene winning an Olympic gold medal in 1984. He has since become champion in four different weight classes. And through it all, Whitaker has defiantly chosen his own path. Pernell Whitaker is as self-confident and self-possessed as any fighter alive. His only loss was a questionable decision against Jose Luis Ramirez in 1988. And Whitaker wasted no time avenging that defeat. On his rise, he defeated everyone in his path. Greg Haugen, Azuma Nelson, Jorge Baez, and Buddy McGirt. But the biggest crossroads of Sweet Pea's career was when he finally got the chance to fight Julio Cesar Chavez. It was a battle to decide who was the best fighter alive. It was ruled a draw, but Whitaker clearly had gotten the better of Chavez. Today, Pernell Whitaker is at yet another crossroads, the clock ticking down on his career. He isn't quite the fighter he used to be. He continues to win, but not as convincingly. With an anticipated showdown against Oscar De La Hoya scheduled for April, Sweet Pea may have only one more chance to prove his greatness. This could be his biggest challenge. But first, Whitaker must open up the path to De La Hoya. Tonight, undefeated Cuban defector Diabeles Hurtado stands in the way of yet another crucial moment in Cornell Whitaker's life. Upstairs in the convention center ballroom, 100 feet away from the arena where Andrew Galata's low blows held Riddick Bowe a couple of months ago. Tonight, we look forward to watching another possibly distracted fighter with all world Pernell Whitaker keeping one eye on Hurtado, the opponent in the present, and one eye on Oscar De La Hoya, a likely future matchup. But first, Sweet Pea must get by the undefeated, little known, Diabelli Hurtado. A live look at Brunel Whitaker as he warms up in his dressing room in preparation for yet another major step in his career. Tonight, an intermediate step toward possible center stage in April. Boxing is brought to you by Fisherman's Friend Medicated Lozenges for soothing relief of coughs, sore throats, and nasal congestion. <coughs> A cough or sore throat? <laughs> Aren't you glad you have friends? Like Fisherman's Friend Medicated Lozenges. They even make nasal passages feel clear. So try Fisherman's Friend Medicated Lozenges with over 100 years of effectiveness. Man, it's cold. You said it. There's something going on here. Looking for a way to warm up this winter? Come to Wendy's. You look like you could use a couple of spicy chicken sandwiches. Wendy's Spicy Chicken Sandwich is a marinated whole breast fillet seasoned with Dave's own blend of pepper and spices. It's got a spicy hit that'll make you feel warm all over. Serves up. We gotta, we gotta get another one. one. Come in this winter and warm up with a Wendy's Spicy Chicken Sandwich. Olympic gold medalist Mia Hamm spends 90 minutes destroying her hair and 90 seconds bringing it back. With Perk Plus, more than a shampoo, it conditions too. How? As you shampoo, the conditioner stays suspended. As you rinse, the conditioners go to work, giving you great hair, simply. Perfect for Mia, because she wants great hair, but she'd rather be living in it than working on it. Wouldn't you? 
perk plus. Simply great hair. Simply. McCain brings you the freshest tasting frozen pizza ever made. McCain Pizza Premier in the unique vacuum packed flavor lock package that seals air out so it stays fresher tasting longer. It cooks in just half the time and has a tender no mess rim. So whenever you're ready for pizza, McCain Pizza Premier is ready for you in fresh tasting deli lovers pepperoni and deluxe. McCain Pizza Premier, we've got a lock on fresh taste. The old pros are putting on a show in Thornhill, Ontario at the CIBC Seniors Curling Championship. Sunday, don't miss end-to-end -end coverage of the women's and men's finals, only on the home of Rock and Roll TSN. He's one of a half dozen or so Cuban refugees and Cuban defectors to have made a mark in the sport here in the USA in the past six years. He has at this moment risen further than any of them. Here's how. fighters are Cuban. The crowd is Cuban. They're all in Miami, supporting the boxers of Team Freedom. For the fighters, Team Freedom is more than just a gimmick. They all escaped from Cuba. 24-year-old Diobeles Hurtado is the first with a shot at a world title. In Cuba, boxing was Hurtado's patriotic duty. Here in America, he can cherish it as his privilege. Here I am in a country where I'm free, where I have the right to do what I want. Here I can be a professional fighter. After Fidel Castro's revolution in 1959, professional boxing was banned in Cuba. But it lived on as a national passion, and Cubans have dominated Olympic and amateur boxing for the past 20 years. From Cuba, to Cuba. Like many Cuban athletes, Hurtado left his family when he was 12 to train at a special national team school, dedicating his life to boxing for the glory of Cuba, Castro, and communism. But as he began to see more of the world, he began to question his life at home. I began to realize that I had been fooled in the Cuban system, and that it is the system that gives man his opportunity to succeed. I realized that in the U.S. I could have an opportunity to succeed, like other fighters, and to be compensated for my work. For 40 years now, Cubans have fled to the United States any way they could. As an athlete, Hurtado had opportunities during team travels to defect. The door opened for him in places like Canada, Peru, and Switzerland. But for years, he held back. This was a decision I had been contemplating for a long time. But I would start to think about my family, and then I would not go through with it. But in 1994, I had the opportunity to stay here in the U.S., the land of the free, and I decided to do it. November 1994, after a meet against the United States national team in Connecticut, Hurtado contacted a Cuban exile in Miami. That night, Diobelis Hurtado left his life behind. I waited until everyone was asleep, and that's when I left. I went out through the door of the bedroom to the elevator, and the man who was going to help me was downstairs waiting for me. I kept thinking, what if my plan to get political asylum fails here in the U.S.? Would they find me, track me down? If they did, my career as a boxer would be over. And also I thought about my family, my parents and seven brothers. No one stopped him. And even though the United States has no diplomatic relations with Cuba, when Hurtado started winning purses, he did manage to send money back home to the family that is never far from his thoughts. They support all that I'm doing here in the United States, and they just wish for the same thing I do, to see each other again. The Team Freedom Fighters are still getting Cuban-style training from Manuel Elizondro, who was a trainer for the Cuban national boxing team until he too defected in 1994. It helps them, this Team Freedom, because the fighters are all together and can support each other and improve together. And we all know that if Diobelis does well and wins, everyone moves up along with him. Hurtado's daily schedule still revolves around his training, just as it did in Cuba. But that's the only aspect of his life that hasn't changed. My home in Cuba was so humble. We didn't have electricity, running water, television. We used candles for light. Here I have cable TV, central air conditioning, and many other things that I didn't dream of having there. But all the luxuries in the world couldn't fill Team Freedom's loneliness. 
We, the team, are like a family. We are united. We train together. We even live near each other and go to each other for support and advice. But it isn't like the members of Team Freedom can replace your mother, father, brothers and family. Although he's made some sacrifices, Diabellis Hurtado believes having freedom of choice makes any hardship worthwhile. Above all else, I like the fact that I'm free. People aren't trying to control the things that I do. I can work for what I want instead of depending on someone to give it to me. Here, I can fight for whatever I want. And we bring you back live to Atlantic City, ringside for the tail of the tape between Fernel Whitaker and Diobelli Hurtado. And you can see that Hurtado enters with a five inch height advantage and a five inch reach advantage as well. Jim, whenever a fighter turns up early for a weigh-in, as Pernell Whitaker did yesterday, it usually indicates he's having a hard time making weight and can't wait to get it over with. And just as soon as it was over, he started to drink water, whatever that means. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Pernell Whitaker Diabella Sertado fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing gate count, no three knockdowns rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. I like those rules, Harold. Free fight punch stat analysis, Larry Merchant. What these numbers about Pernell Whitaker show is that he is throwing fewer punches now than he did earlier in his career and landing at a lower percentage. What they don't show is now that he's gotten older and a little slower, that he's sitting on his punches better, throwing them harder. Here you see Hurtado's numbers. He throws a lot of punches lands a modest percentage of them how modest will it be against the defensive genius Whitaker and the look at Diabelli Sertado already in the ring along with the members of his camp from Miami Sertado surrounded there by his small entourage and there he is the members of Team Freedom dress in Cuban colors and as we get a look at his record Hurtado like Whitaker beat Rivera in his last fight except it was Antonio Rivera. <laughs> One question about these Cuban amateurs who have had many, many, many amateur fights is how well they will make the transition to being top professionals. And now Hurtado begins to dance to Whitaker's entry music. You don't want to dance to the other guy's entry music, do you, George? No, you don't want to dance to his music. Seems like a relaxed, confident kid, though. Yeah, he's either blasé or unruffled. We'll find out in the ring. Or he doesn't understand what's going on, which may just as be, be just as well. <laughs> Well, so far we've just got just the entry music and no entry. Ah, here we go. Not only is it his eighth defense of the welterweight title, and he held titles at 135, 140 pounds as well, but tonight, Pernell Whitaker appears here on HBO for the 17th time in his career. That breaks the previous record of 16, which he shared with Mike Tyson. So this is the all-time number one most HBO exposed fighter of them all. Many of them, when he was a lightweight, when I believe he was really at his very best. Record for Whitaker, 39 wins. The loss to Ramirez, regarded by many as a bogus decision, later revenge. The draw with Chavez, an obvious bogus decision. This man could very easily have been 41-0. Of course, he also could have lost that bout with Wilfredo Rivera last April in San Martin, when a lot of people felt that he was given a gift on the scorecards. And now let's go up to Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, from Caesars Atlantic City, main events monitor in association with your undisputed 
undefeated king of beers, Budweiser, this Bud's for you, present 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Welterweight Championship of the World. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman Jerry Gormley, Board Members Gary Shaw and Steve Katz, Deputy Commissioner John Grego. Physicians at ringside, Dr. Dominic Coletta, Dr. Eric Wormser, Dr. Kenneth Remsen, and Dr. Charles Wilson. This contest is also sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, WBC supervisors at ringside are Dr. Jose Mayorga and Dr. Pedro Siguera. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Jose Lazaro Carrasco, Sergio Silvi, and John Stewart. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, your referee, Arthur Mercanti. And now, for the thousands in attendance, and the millions watching around the world. From Caesars Atlantic City, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! In the red corner, wearing white, blue, and red, and weighing 146 pounds, he brings a perfect professional record of 20 consecutive victories without a loss. 13 by knockout. He is a native of Cuba, but now resides and fights out of Miami, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the undefeated challenger, ranked number 10 in the world, the Obelis El Oriental Urpado. across the ring in the blue corner, wearing black and weighing 147 pounds. In 1984, he captured Olympic gold. And now as a professional, his record is 39 victories, 16 by knockout, with one disputed loss and one controversial draw. He has six world title belts in four different divisions and is still recognized as the pound for pound king of boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, from Norfolk, Virginia, presenting the WBC welterweight world champion and four time champion of the world, Pernell Sweetie Whitaker. Roger. Let's go, champ. Good evening, gentlemen. We received your rules early in the day. I expect you to obey these rules. Let's have a nice, clean fight. Good luck to the both of you. Jim Hurtado is known as the ring dancer. I hope it's less Alvin Ailey than Muhammad Ali. Judge ready here. Judge ready. Judge ready. Time up. Sweet histories of boxing would occur a totally known quantity. Hurtado at this level, totally unknown. And Hurtado plants Whitaker on his butt. Legitimate knockdown with a right hand punch. Purnell smiling as if to say, imagine this, it's a joke. But George, I don't think that was a slip. That was a knockdown. It wasn't a slip, but he was standing square to Hurtado and he was off balance. But it is a knockdown, and he has to overcome what could be a two-point lead already. Last Saturday night, a total unknown from Colombia named Mauricio Pastrana blew away Michael Carbajal before that big crowd in Las Vegas. And the crowd sat in stunned disbelief through much of the bout as Pastrana befuddled Carbajal. Could the same thing happen to Whitaker tonight? Whitaker lands a left hand over the top. Whitaker. One thing Whitaker doesn't want to do right now is go and pay him back. He got 12 rounds to get even. You don't want to do it the first round. It's one of these young guys. Reflexes are best. 
Well, for as great as Brunel has been, he's been on his on his trunks before. He was down against Rafael Williams early in his career. He's knocked down by Roger Mayweather. He was knocked down by Buddy McGirt. So it isn't the first time. Arata is doing all of this by almost instincts and reflexes. He's not aiming to do it. It's just happening on its own. Whitaker generally has those antennas working. And there come a point where you just got to keep your hands up and not depend on your quickness in the middle. Mercado likes to move and flurry. Doesn't stand still a lot. Circles to both sides. Tries to land punches and bunches when he gets close and takes a shot. Great, great, great. What do you hit with? Right hand? Round one in the convention center. Brunel Whitaker trying to step right through. Diabella Hurtado on his way to Oscar De La Hoya, referee Arthur McCanny, warning Hurtado not to hold and hit, and to avoid head contact. Let's keep this clean now. Hold those hands up! That's what happens sometimes when you have a lot of experience. You have a tendency to get in close, let the guy throw his punches, thinking you're going to hit him, but those judges, they count those little shots. You can easily lose a lot of round over underestimating young kids. This is the style, I believe, that Cubans were taught to be able to fight in the Olympics. Throw your punches and get out of there. And Arthur McCanny working the vocal cords pretty hard here in round number one. This sports break is brought to you by Scotiabank. What to do. Hi, folks. Pleased to welcome you to the newsroom. I'm Michael Landsberg. We'll get back to boxing in a moment. Right now, boxing news from New York today. Word the WBC welterweight champion Pernell Whitaker will face unbeaten Oscar De La Hoya. We feel it's going to be a very difficult boxing match, but I'll be prepared. I'll definitely know that he'll be in the best shape of his life for this, for this bout. I'm not going to predict the rounds because the fight's from 1 to 12. It's going to be a great fight. Everybody's going to get the opportunity to see it. You guys, I need you to build him up because I'm going to knock him down. Thank you very much. <laughs> fight goes April the 12th in Las Vegas. We'll see you for Sports Desk 11 Eastern right here on TSN. No more avoiding this. I've got to know where I stand. I told them my numbers. Let's see what they say. Where is that thing? He talked about me retiring in 20 years with $40,000 income. I'll need to save 715000 in my dreams. Hmm. This says I could be investing better. There are ways I could save more. I've got choices. I can catch up. Okay. At least I won't be wondering 20 years from now what I could have done. Call now for your personalized RRSP reality check. 1-800-575-6888. Introducing the all-new Toyota Camry. Take the bright side of the road. Yeah, 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 yeah. Quick knockdown. This is like a wake-up call at about 12:01 a.m. 
That's how fast that happened. Solid right hand. Purnell was not hurt at all, but as you can see, his, his stance was square to Hurtado. So there is some hurt in Hurtado's fist. Get that bucket out of there. Round two in Atlantic City. Whitaker almost certainly in what is a rare position for him, behind on the scorecards. Doesn't spend a lot of time trailing in fights. And a two-point round for Hurtado on Harold Letterman's scorecard. So Purnell, who throughout his career has won habitually 75 to 80 percent of the rounds in which he's fought, loses the first round here and now a measure of revenge with a hard left hand that drives Rosado back. The thing about following one of these young guys, especially the Cuban fighters, they are known to have good right hands. You can't follow them just by walking to them. You got to have a left jab, a right jab, something touching them all the time. Well, it's clear that Hurtado is going to try to stay away from Brunel, so the job here, George, is to cut off the ring. How can he do it? Yeah, well, Whitaker, he's got to cut off the ring with his fist. He can't just do it with his feet, which he is doing. Stepping in front of him and then waiting for the kid to hit him. Well, he's put his right jab in front of him. So he believes that Brunel should be a little busier with his fists got than to he get, has been. He's got to get better, uh, busier. He's got to put together some combinations. They don't have to be exactly on the button, which he's trying to do. Whitaker's knee touches the canvas again. This one where Candy rules the slip, as indeed it was. Hurtado has a great advantage. He's sparred and worked with so many softballs in Cuba that it's no difficult task for him to face a softball in Whitaker. <laughs> and you saw Hurtado taking that little angry shot at Whitaker. Clearly, this is going to be a working night for Arthur McCanty. Hurtado with a low blow. They hold and hit again. Watch your head. And McCanty says, keep your forehead off of him. Successful rapid punch for uh, Hurtado as Whitaker had all but turned his back on him. When you're fighting these guys, you almost have to bring amateurs in camp with you to train because if you prepare yourself against seasoned pros, you just will not get their time. It's got like a glorified amateur and he's doing good. Yeah, his style is so awkward that Brunel seems thrown out of sync by it, George. That's right. Like a jazz musician at a rock concert. <laughs> <laughs> so far, Hurtado's had the jazz, and Brunel Whitaker hasn't Great. been able to rock. The good thing about Whitaker, he's making this kid work every minute of each round. Hey, Annie. Hi. Love the hat. What an idiot. My hair's a disaster. Look at my dandruff. That's easy to take care of with the right shampoo. Here. With ordinary shampoo, flakes can come back. But Head & Shoulders helps eliminate dandruff and stop flakes before they even start. So you may never see flakes again. And your hair. My hair looks great. Thanks. Don't forget your hat. Who needs it? Head & Shoulders. Because great hair can't have flakes. Cough <coughs> for sore throat? <laughs> Aren't you glad you have friends? Like Fisherman's Friend medicated lozenges. They even make nasal passages feel clearer. So try Fisherman's Friend medicated lozenges with over 100 years of effectiveness. NCAA Basketball, North Carolina Tar Heels versus Duke Blue Devils, TSN Wednesday. Third round begins. First two rounds haven't been particularly kind to Brunel Whitaker as he tries to establish a rhythm in fighting young Diobelis Hurtado, a former Cuban national team member who defected to the USA in 1994. Now Whitaker's starting to use his hand and just stop trying to cut him off with his feet as much. Now he's using his hand a bit more, which is what you got to do. 
Whitaker by punch count numbers through only 20 punches or landed only 20 out of 61 punches in round two. Hurtado threw 80 punches, so Hurtado has been the busier fighter and has done the most damage so far. Hurtado landed a little counter in there against the ropes. Whitaker steps across the ring and can't find it as Hurtado turns away. You see that Sweet Pea has now made the transition all the way from a very sophisticated boxer who moved the way Hurtado is moving now, but, but in a smoother style, to now that he's become the total aggressor here. Only because of that quick knockdown. He realizes he's got to catch up now and get some momentum going, get those points back. That's a lot of nerve to go in there with Cornell Whitaker doing the dance. And Whitaker moving more and more toward a brawling style as he tries to open Hurtado up and make him fight. He may not want to do that. Oh. Third time that Whitaker's knee has been down on the canvas. One knockdown, two slips. Break. You often Break. see awkward confrontations between southpaws and conventional Break. fighters. Hurtado on top of being conventional He's a side-to-side -side mover who throws punches only in flurries, has a totally off the style, and has brought Whitaker out of his game plan early. Not only that, you'll notice whenever these fighters get to a certain kind of fights and they'll start to lose, first name go, their legs. Sometimes you just tap them a bit and they fall and they don't even understand. Well, you heard what Willie Pep said last week, what happens to old fighters, George. You see, first their legs go, then their chin goes, and then their friends go. <laughs> Whitaker sometimes is stumbling down on his own. Pep left out, the, left out the best part. How many marriages did he have? Six. Hey, hey, hey. Now, this is just so ugly, I can hardly stand it. Two times Makes me wonder even and more why, why her title is here, because you can never look good against a fighter of, of this kind. I don't care how great you are, you hey, cannot look you good against this kind of fighter. Fight with the guy, the hands got to be high, okay? And look, snap that jab. You can't, you can't just lay that jab out there. Faint at him, look. As soon as you get close, you just got to throw punches with him, all right? Keep your hands going. Fast punches. Let me get the power. Fast punches, all right? He, this guy ain't got nothing. He trying to hit and run. He can't win no fight like that. You gotta come back with a body punch. Hit that, hit those ribs in the sand with that right hook of yours. Right, punch fast. That's what you gotta do with this guy. Okay, baby. You win in the fight. Watch those blows. I think a question everybody is asking themselves, including the officials perhaps, I mean by that I mean the judges, is can you take the title from a great fighter with this kind of run, run, hit, run, run style? All you got to do is stop every now and then and knock him down. Surely you can Well, if you it. knock him down four or five times, I guess you would. He doesn't even seem intent on repeating that knockdown. Oh, it didn't happen out of strategy it just happened by way of reflex you see he catches it on the tail end of an accidental shot well he's going to have a better chance of repeating that knockdown if, we're, if Whitaker has to keep chasing him and chasing him and chasing him like this because you, when he connects he's going to be connecting on a guy who's coming in that's right you I can't follow these guys they have a punching reputation Whitaker's got to keep his hand up whenever he throws a shot his defense has got to be in position Tato was coached by the legendary Alcides Cigar, the longtime coach of the Cuban team, the man who's developed such great right-hand punchers in the heavyweight ranks as Felice Savon and Teofilo Stevenson. Yeah. Whitaker's corner told him to stop throwing power punches because this fight is going to go into maybe the 10th round and throw all your power. You are not going to have any. Whitaker lands a hard left hand as he chases Hurtado along the ropes. But by and large, it's been another one of those ugly rounds, and Purnell hasn't gotten any rhythm going on his jab at all. And Hurtado stops him in his tracks with a couple of counter shots. Those shots hurt. 
Hurtado lands two to the body. Step back. If he goes to Purnell's body when Purnell comes in and can wear him down a little going through the middle rounds, we will have some high drama coming down the stretch. But Taylor is getting the best of this fight, there's no doubt about it, because he's got Purnell Whitaker following him around. I think I imagine that Whitaker thinks he's back in the 84 Olympics. <laughs> Except this time the Cuban showed up. <laughs> Sometimes you really think you're backing the other guy up, and really the guy is making you follow him around. Let you land one good shot here and there. Step back. Whitaker's got the stuff, it's just that he's not prepared for the quickness of a rabbit. Well, he's going to win. Hurtado. Hurtado. You're going to get it. We're only in the fourth round. Yeah. All right, let's go. Don't, just don't try for the first name. <laughs> See, those shots are hurting Pernell Whitaker. And they're going to hurt him more and more as the fight goes on because he's throwing his energy away, looking for one shot to get this knockdown back. Now Whitaker starts to go to the body, and Hurtado reacts in such a way that that looks like a good idea for Pernell. I think you can bet that between rounds, Lou Duba and Ronnie Shields are going to ask Pernell to go back to the ribcage of Diabilis Hurtado, and Hurtado lands a low blow as that round comes to a close, and Pete limps around as though for the moment in agony. A cough or sore throat? Aren't you glad you have friends? My Fisherman's Friend medicated lozenges. They even make nasal passages feel clearer. So try Fisherman's Friend medicated lozenges with over 100 years of effectiveness. Come on, we're gonna fly to Paris. City of Lights, Eiffel Tower, Paris. Uh, who doesn't drool at the very thought? People come for the food. If you're so stuck on France, fine. Let's offer something different. Maybe baked camembert. Who could resist sirloin cabernet? Steak with bourbon cheese. It's the food. Paris, Paris. Come to the keg before February 24th to sample the taste of France and a chance to win a dream vacation to Paris. Leave the keg. Xers, take to the snow and ice for a pro competition of excellent action. TSN presents the first annual Winter X Games beginning Thursday on TSN. So you have the classic confrontation in the ring between the old champion and the unknown young challenger with the young challenger seeming in the eyes of Harold Letterman to get the better of it. You have the classic confrontation at ringside as Larry is diametrically opposed to Harold's scoring of the fight. A sideshow. Whitaker's got the power. He's just he's behind on quickness this time for the first time. And again, Whitaker almost loses his feet as the right knee dipped almost all the way down to the canvas. He did throw the left hand straight to the body, and you heard Lou Duba between rounds imploring Brunel to go to the body. Ah, ah. comes in the top of the left. Hurtado managing to tie him up momentarily, and Hurtado throws awkward punches from odd angles, but lands them. And he goes to the body, which means that this could be a, have a decay in effect on Whitaker in the latter round. Come on, let's stop. I'm telling you, if Hurtado would to concentrate his attack to the body now, he would set himself up for a real shot. That's true. You don't get credit for body punches in the amateurs. Not enough, that's for sure. But he's had 20 professional fights. He's learning, even though all those fights are against relatively unknown opposition. Straight left hand for Whitaker. Backs Hurtado into the ropes. Best punch of the fight for Burnell. And he remembers to go back to the body, and Hurtado lands a little right-hand counter in close. The problem with Whitaker, he throws a good one-two and doesn't come back with a hook. And that's where the trouble starts. This guy beats him with that third shot. There's another flurry of punches from Hurtado. Now Whitaker comes back. Whenever you hit him with two shots, you've got to finish back on balance by holding up with a hook. Hurtado with another low blow. Mercanti... Too late to do anything about that one. Hurtado's blinking his eyes as though the sweat is bothering him or perhaps he's gotten something in there that stings them. As long as he's blinking his eyes like that, Brunel ought to tattoo him with the jab. Yeah, he can't see on that side, no doubt about it, but Whitaker just doesn't seem to want to penetrate and concentrate on that eye. One point! One point being deducted from Hurtado for hitting behind the head. 
So that'll make it Let's closer on the scorecards if, as you might suspect, Hurtado still has an early lead. Remember, he knocked Whitaker down in the opening seconds of the fight. Whitaker will not be able to walk around with his hands down like that, thinking this kid can't hit him. I don't understand, frankly, that point deduction because Whitaker is ducking in an awkward way, and her title is just swinging and hitting on the top. He doesn't really talk about his hair, but I know he thinks about it. I've seen him check it in the mirror. That's why I got him Pantene Pro-V Shampoo and Treatment Conditioner to help keep his hair strong. The pro-vitamin formula penetrates root to tip, while the conditioners improve the hair, helping to keep it looking really healthy, really strong. I notice a difference now. He does too. Pantene Pro-V, for hair so healthy looking, it shines. places in the world with a savings plan that goes just about everywhere you do. Our calling card, best card, period. Canada hosts top athletes from around the world in the inspiring, sensational World Winter Games. Join us for this unique sports experience. The 1997 Special Olympics World Winter Games, beginning February 2nd on TSN. Round six of the schedule 12. Punched at numbers through five rounds. Hurtado has thrown more punches than Whitaker, 211 to 192. Has landed more punches than Whitaker, 70 to 64. Has landed more power punches than Whitaker. So statistically, at least, Hurtado has the numerical advantages according to our punch stat computations. Whitaker has, a, this has an advantage if he stays to Hurtado, Hurtado's uh, left side. Great. Great. Because, because, he, because the guy can't right see it on that side. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. seem to be able to. So you, you start your punches from that side, you won't get counted as much. Whenever he starts with his straight left, that's when the trouble starts for Whitaker. But Whitaker is depending more on the straight left than the jab up to this point, although he threw two jabs there and then set up what became a low blow. Hurtado goes down. Timeout. And Mercanti gets a break to Hurtado, who could get as many as five minutes to recover here. Now it's beef stew right. without the beef and the stew. Come I, and I think Brunel is thoroughly frustrated by what's going on come there. Come he's going to have to keep his cool if he's going to be able to think his way back into dominance in this fight. And this will take some thinking, George. Well, that's true. And it's hard to think when a guy's hitting you full to one. Well, you've got to be the aggressor, too. Stop holding. Right. Stop holding now. Where did he can fix all of that just by throwing combinations of three, three or more punches? And when he throws a one-two, he's going to get hit. Back. Hey, hey. Down goes Whitaker for the second time in the fight. The second Six. true knockdown of the fight. It comes in the sixth round. There was one in the first. And Brunel Whitaker is burying himself on the scorecard so far. And again, it's because of the way he's coming into her title flat, head down, off, in an awkward stance. He's following a puncher around. You don't want to follow a puncher unless you are running at him almost. Somewhere at ringside, Oscar De La Hoya can feel the millions draining away. And you're reminded of some of the great missed opportunities in the history of the sport. Most recent one, of course, Tommy Morrison had a signed contract for seven and a half million dollars to fight Lennox Lewis. Took a tune-up fight against Michael Bent. Got knocked out in the first round. But a better one? Mike Tyson had a 20 million dollar agreement to fight Evander Holyfield when he went to Tokyo to take on a fellow named Buster Douglas. So it's happened before. 
You spent a whole career trying to be an excellent boxer. You don't want to end it trying to be a slugger, and that's what Whitaker's doing now. Whitaker lands a big left hand as the round comes to a close, but Hurtado walks back to his corner with his hand in the air. Moving. All right, you got to snap the jab. Score points with the jab. When it get close, fake at the guy, then let the punches go, okay? You got to step swing over. wild shots at you. You just swing your punch. He don't know what he's doing. You just swing punch. There you saw that. Now that was a clean knockdown, a much cleaner knockdown I felt than in the first round. That one stung a little bit. And that was a definite two-point knockdown in the sixth round. So two knockdowns of the well-away champion of the world in the first six rounds. By relatively unknown Cuban, the Obele Sertado. With Wicker trying to earn his way toward a multi-million dollar payday against Oscar De La Hoya in April. And an ashen-faced De La Hoya moves in to join us at ringside right now. Oscar De La Hoya with a headset on now and a microphone in front of them. Let's open that mic up, guys, because uh, this is some drama. And Oscar, how's your heart doing? Well, I'm still crossing my fingers. I'm kind of shaking now, but uh, I think Whitaker, Whitaker will do well. He's, uh, he's having trouble with him, but um, he'll, he'll come on in the later rounds. Whitaker is always a, a game fighter. He's uh, always prepared, but... Uh, you now, I thought that punch hurt Whitaker more than any punch that's hit him so far, even though he didn't go down. Well, and he's smiling and shaking it off, which sometimes indicate that a guy really has been hurt. Technically and stylistically, Oscar, what can Purnell do to reverse the tide against this guy who is so unusual in his style? Whitaker has to use more jabs. He's not using his jab whatsoever. And I feel that if Whitaker uses his jabs more, he can lead with those right hands afterwards. He's just coming straight in with the right hands. If he comes in, moving his head, moving his waist with the jabs, he will do well against him. Well, Meanwhile, another point deduction from Hurtado for holding behind the head. So the points he's gained with the knockdowns, he has lost to foul deductions. Halfway through round seven. And Oscar, we've been saying the same thing. Why doesn't Pinnell throw more jabs and try to get a rhythm going with the jab? Well, sometimes what happens is uh, when you think you have an easy opponent, you tend not to train as hard. And I feel that Whitaker really didn't train as hard for this guy. He thought he had an easy fight, but as we know, he's having a tough time with this guy. And also, he's fighting a guy who is supremely awkward and yet has a certain kind of quickness and movement that makes it difficult to fight him. Well, he does have a tough opponent against him, but um, I feel if, if Whitaker was at 100% and sticking that jab, he would have had an easier time with this guy. Whitaker trying right hooks off the front foot now. Well, coming in with the straight left. Hurtado beginning to tire a little bit as round seven progresses, and he's still blinking his eyes, George, although he's having trouble seeing in there. Whitaker's got him hurt now, but has he enough to finish him off? That's hard to do when you've been the puncher for the whole fight. You've got to finish him off while you got him hurt. Brunel landed a hard right hand, closing seconds of the seventh. Hurtado will be happy to go to his corner this time. I believe loyalty is important in life. It's important to me. It's important to my friends. Uh, it's important with me and my dog. Larry has been a customer of ours for a long time. He has a store just around the corner. I really like a good cup of coffee, and Tim Hortons makes that coffee. I know he's got two beautiful daughters, and he has a son, and he's got Sammy. She started doing it about three or four years ago. She does it about, uh, well, several times a day. Well, it's amazing. I mean, we're all used to it here because it's been going on for a long time, but most people, they've never seen anything like it. It was cool. <laughs> She retrieves things naturally. I got about 5,000 golf balls at home. 
Sammy's just a very special dog. You know, special dog to me, she's a special dog to the whole neighborhood. It's something you can count on, and that's a good thing. You're looking awfully happy today. Well, I did what you told me. I told you to do something? Well, you hinted, anyway, that I should quit dreaming about money and call in the smart people. You didn't. I did. I phoned your smart person at Midland Walwyn. I like her. And she's working hard for you? Better than that, she's thinking hard for me. You know, I should listen to you more often. This is true. Walker special old pin game rolling your way through 1997. Wednesday, the ladies hit the lanes in the five pin competition. The Hiram Walker special old pins game rolling your way on TSN. Now we're going to see if this young fighter with just 20 professional fights has the poise to deal with this weird fight in which points are being deducted and he's knocking down the champion and stuff is happening that's probably never happened in his entire career. But all of a sudden, Hurtado looks very shaky on his feet, as though he has suddenly been overcome by fatigue and is worried about his ability to finish the fight. He's trying to stay away from Whitaker as the eighth begins. He's had some problem with that left eye all night. Whitaker still not able to land his jab, but the secret here tonight is Hurtado's got the... Advantage with the reach. Whitaker thinks he's out of the way and he gets hit. Whitaker with a hard left hand to the body. That hurt. And Ronnie Seals has been kick. begging Purnell to go back to the body. Lou Dubas mentioned it too. I think he's done his most damage on those occasions when he's concentrated downstairs. Given how unorthodox that Hurtado is, Oscar, is anything that happens in this fight relevant to your fight with Whitaker if it happens? Well, uh, we have totally different styles, and um, I mean, of course, we're going to pick up different things from what Hurtado is doing because uh, it is being effective on this fight. But of course, I mean, we're, we're two totally different fighters, two totally different human beings, and uh, but Hurtado is giving him trouble. And I feel that uh, from each fighter that Whitaker has picked up, has fought, we can pick up a different move and, and pick up uh, different combinations that, uh, that Whitaker's opponents have been, you know, giving them trouble with. So. Well, of course, one huge difference as Whitaker goes down to the canvas again, and this is the third slip for Whitaker. He's actually been on the canvas five times tonight. Two knockdowns, three slips. But Purnell is having to chase her title all over the ring, and you're probably the one who's going to have to chase if you face him in April. Well, actually, it's going to be a very tough fight if Whitaker does win. And one point I want to bring out is uh, that slip that Whitaker had just right now. I, I truly feel that really, Whitaker didn't train for this fight because a slip like that, you don't just slip down and go down by, by somebody shoving you. Um, you go down, you don't have legs if you didn't train. And that's what Whitaker's doing now. He just didn't train for this guy because he thought it was going to be an easy fight. The other Norman thing, nodding his head vigorously at that comment. But, you know, I put it out earlier, if you remember goes Hurtado, and that, this will be called a slip. That Purnell had some difficulty making the weight. Who knows what it indicates? Oscar is saying maybe it indicates that he wasn't in top, top shape. But the other thing here is, is Purnell is not used to being the aggressor. So that he's getting himself into positions, into awkward positions where he can be knocked down. Well, he's in a totally different situation because Whitaker's a, a, a fighter who uh, always tends to go back and wait for you to throw, to make mistakes and throw punches. What he's doing is he, he's being the aggressor, which he's not used to being. Deli shaved black forest ham, oven roasted turkey and chicken, a sorted sub. Popular downtown deli or the Winklers on Maple Street. Introducing the new and improved taste of maple leaf sandwich meats that will turn your home into a deli. Deli shaved black forest ham, oven roasted turkey and chicken, sub express with ham bologna and summer sausage. You forgot the mustard on table seven. And you forgot your check. New maple leaf sandwich meats. Taste that's a cut above.
Hurtado's punch count has spiraled downward dramatically. Only 35 punches thrown in that last round, only seven landed. Pete, on the other hand, stepping the pace up. He landed 21 punches in that round, many of them power shots. Whitaker's got to get close and stay close. He's getting in trouble whenever he gets on the end of those shots. Once he's close, it's an easy fight for him. And you thought he deserved credit for a knockdown in the last round. Oh, yeah. He, he ruled the slip. He got a knockdown. He wasn't giving credit for it. But he's got to stay close to this kid. He can't stay on the outside. This kid has got a good reach, and he's quick. As Whitaker reaches down to acknowledge what he thought was another low blow, Andrew Galata is sitting at ringside. Just a coincidence. Whitaker is too late now to start working on the jab. You got to get close to this kid and don't allow him to get anything going. The last time he reached out to shake hands, this kid hit him. <laughs> right. So this time, Brunel didn't reach back out. No, you got to stop that. Now, that was a pro move. Maybe the only one we've seen him use tonight. Come on, keep it clean. Good fight, keep it clean. Whitaker is making a bad mistake standing on an outside trying to match jabs and things of that nature. Just get close and stay close. Whatever happens in this fight, it's clear now that this is a terrible match Come on, for Pernell Whitaker. Let's box. Because even if you win, you can't look good against a fighter of this kind. Whitaker has an easy time throwing that right hook. I don't know why he stopped him. There you go. There it was. And Hurtado completely turns his back, and Whitaker decides to keep going after him. And now Mercanti deducts a point from Whitaker. So he's deducted two from Hurtado. He's deducted one from Whitaker. He's called a sip on what George Foreman thought ought to have been a knockdown credited to Whitaker. He's called three slips when Whitaker's been into the canvas, and Whitaker has twice been knocked down. It has been a bizarre and action-filled evening in Atlantic City. Keep it clean now. And it's nervous time now as Oscar De La Hoya watches at ringside and considers how to replace the millions of dollars that will go away if Fernell <laughs> Whitaker loses to Diabellis Hurtado. Great left hand by Whitaker. Now Brunel holds her top behind the right hand, or behind the head with the right hand, and gets away with it before McCanny breaks him. No doubt about it, whenever Whitaker decides to throw that right hook, he connects every time. But once he moves for the straight left, that's the trouble. Break! Break! Stop holding now. He's not going to do a lot of damage out here in the center of the ring. The way her top is fighting is going to have to pin him against the ropes in these closing rounds. Let, come on, let's get, get that second win now. This fight is ours. He can't punch. He's box now. Teach him how to box. You, you show him how the Cuban box work. We're going to show him. We're going to show him. We're going to show him. Now let's see about the point that was taken away. I don't know, that's another, just as I didn't think that Whitaker earned a point that was taken away from Hurtado earlier, I don't think a point should have been taken away from him now. It was accidental, it wasn't hard, and it was Hurtado who turned his let's back go, let's keep it clean on now. Let's Whitaker. Keep it clean. And Harold, how do you have it scored through nine? Larry, with all these points being taken away, I got it even. 83, 83, 4, 4, 1 even. I got it all even to this point. But let me tell you something. If you turn away, the other guy has no right to hit you in the back of the head or the kidneys. You can kill a guy like that, Larry. You can't do it. You can't whack him in the brainstem. It's illegal. I receive your point, Harold. I have Whitaker ahead six rounds to two with one even. It shows how weird I am about this fight. Good punch. All right, right hand by Hurtado as Whitaker left himself wide open as he throws haymaker punches to try to put Hurtado in trouble. That's not, that's Every time that Whitaker that's thinks this guy is on the verge of fainting, throws something and shake hits him up. Good right hand. It is one unusual customer right there. And that's giving him the best of it. 
Whitaker was able to land a good straight left hand right to the middle of the face that time. Yep. Right off the nose of Hurtado. But if he's intending to knock him out, he's probably waiting for him. Spending a lot of energy too late to Well, finish. the late knockout that's... is not a Pernell Whitaker specialty, that's for sure. So if he's going to be staring at going to the scorecards, and despite the uh, generosity of Larry's scoring, I suspect that's that Pernell would be well advised to win these last three rounds. I think Oscar will feel a lot better if Pernell wins these last three rounds. He tries to make it abundantly clear on the scorecards. Well, Jim, I'm crossing my fingers. Now I'm uh, going into crossing my toe finger, toe finger so I'm, I'm hoping Whitaker uh, just keeps on throwing punches, wins the, wins the rounds, and uh, we can get it on in April. The thing about going into training with you guys, sometimes you physically can do it, but psychologically you got to be afraid of them to train properly, too. Good body punch by Potato. You know, Hurtada as a boy walked 16 miles to and from a gym to become a fighter. He later got a master's degree in phys ed at Havana University, so he probably can fight like this all night and all weekend. And Whitaker, whenever you pull him, his legs give out on him. He's having a rough time making his legs obey. Now time out to restore the tape on Pernell Whitaker's glove. We're in round 10. Time in! Whitaker makes the mistakes of putting one twos rather than one two three, and that's when the trouble starts. Oh, right. How do you throw one two threes three. against this guy, George? You, you just gotta do play. it. You don't wait to hit him. Just throw them. It's like trying to hit a snake. Yeah, but just throw them. If you can hit him with one, you can hit him with three. That hurt. Right hand lead by Hurtado. He has damaged Whitaker several times with quick right hands. Hurtado with some swelling around his left eye as the tenth comes to a close. Dude, two boards are passe, and you're jonesing for something new. Well, chill out, because with us, you'll be styling. Ski tips, repairs, World Cup reports, now you're happening. Check out the Ride Guide Thursday, TSN. Hey, Annie. Hi. Love the hat. Oh, I need it. My hair's a disaster. Look at my dandruff. That's easy to take care of with the right shampoo. Here. With ordinary shampoo, flakes can come back, but Head & Shoulders helps eliminate dandruff and stop flakes before they even start. So you may never see flakes again. And your hair. My hair looks great, thanks. Don't forget your hat. Who needs it? Head & Shoulders, because grey hair can't have flakes. <coughs> A cough or sore throat? <laughs> Aren't you glad you have friends? Like Fisherman's Friend Medicated Lozenges. They even make nasal passages feel clearer. So try Fisherman's Friend Medicated Lozenges with over 100 years of effectiveness. Boxing is brought to you by Fisherman's Friend Medicated Lozenges for soothing relief of coughs, sore throats, and nasal congestion. Very interesting, George. Lou Duva and Ronnie Shields, regarded by many as one of the best corners in the sport, telling Brunel Whitaker on, that now. he needs a knockout to win. Break! Believe me, let's, let's look closer than that. That's the judgment they've decided to pass on to the fighter, whether he's going to listen to them remains to be seen. Certainly Ronnie Shields wants what George Foreman has been suggesting Whitaker should do, which is to flurry and throw more punches in bunches. So you get close and just let three or four go. You don't worry about if they're going to connect or not. Sometimes you... In his 41 fight career, Pernell Whitaker has never had a knockout beyond the sixth round. Never. So in all likelihood, this baby's going to the scorecard. And it doesn't promise to get any prettier or more fluid in the last couple of rounds. Good right hand by... Topping right over the top by Hurtado. That's right. Hurtado is really having a feel stay here, and he didn't expect it. That good body punch. Yeah, left to the body by Whitaker. Hurtado stops throwing. Whitaker keeps going to the body. Hurtado holding Whitaker's head between his gloves. He's, just young, he's a young fighter. He's going to pay him back for that. <laughs> and he lands a left hand over the top, although softly. 
Whitaker gets close, doesn't do anything. One thing I've been observing throughout the whole fight is that Huertado's beating Whitaker to his game. Oh, what a left hand by Whitaker! And he takes advantage with four more straight left. Austin McCanny watching. And it's over. It is over. Bernal Whitaker rescues himself dramatically. And Oscar De La Hoya lights into a smile as big as all of the accidents. That's what boxing is all about. That's what boxing is all about. And that's what champions do. And that's what multi-million dollar paydays are built on. Well, I just told you about 20 seconds before that, that Pernell Whitaker never in his own career had a knockout past the sixth round. But then again, he never fought in a fight like this one, George. A new day is he. <laughs> Evidently, he needs that payday more than you think, Oscar De La Hoya. Uh, now, one thing about... I want it more. One thing about what happened there, you know, we've often said in the past that Whitaker has trouble finishing when he gets guys in trouble. He finished this time, that's for sure. And when that guy got himself twisted up into the road, he's fighting a gifted amateur with great legs, youth, hunger, but an amateur nonetheless. He'll never be able to fight a fight or with someone again like that. This guy was quicker than any fighter he's ever going to get in the ring with. You know, as Hurtado got hung up in the ropes there, I thought for a moment about a Cuban star of the 1950s and early 60s named Benny Kid Perret. He got himself hung up in the ropes one night at Madison Square Garden and wound up dying in a New York hospital. I think if he had it to do over again, Arthur McKay might have stopped this one or two punches short of where he finally I, did so. I agree with you, Jim. He was helpless there on the ropes. He couldn't escape, and he wasn't returning any fire. Stopping right there would have been okay. That's okay. That would have done. That would have been nice. I think Arthur would like to have that one back. Just a couple punches short of there. Be that as it may, you can't expect Whitaker to back up now, knowing that he's been behind all night. Trying to finish it. No, Whitaker's just doing his job. He did exactly what he had to do under those circumstances. Uh, like George Foreman and Joe Frazier. <laughs> Nobody ever followed a corner's instructions better. That's for sure. <laughs> they told him he had to go out and knock the guy out. And he did it. And he went out and did well, it. Well, I know. James Tony against Tim Littles followed instructions in exactly the same way. I said better. <laughs> <laughs> And I've just gotten word through uh, our communication system that Oscar De La Hoya will open on that fight. Ladies and gentlemen, Vegas your attention, please. Two to one Here favorite. at Caesars Atlantic Sea, the end comes at one minute. 52 seconds of round 11. The winner and still WBC welterweight champion of the world, Pernell. Sweet Pea Whitaker! And here, Harold Letterman and George Foreman are the numbers that underline the significance of what Pernell Whitaker just did. I'm holding the three official scorecards on which going into the 11th round, the Abene Sertado was leading Pernell Whitaker 94-92, 96-91, and 93-92. In other words, Hurtado was headed toward a possible unanimous decision. Final punch at numbers, and you can see that Whitaker stepped up the pressure in the closing rounds and wound up landing and throwing more than Diabele Sertado. But if Whitaker goes out against Oscar De La Hoya and throws only 440 punches in 10-plus rounds, he is expected to be in trouble. George Foreman, I, uh, I know that from a style standpoint, Whitaker De La Hoya is going to look a lot different than this, but does this showing by Purnell tonight diminish, in your view, his chances against a fighter like De La Hoya? As a matter of fact, it improves in my mind. Really? Why yeah. is that? Because not only is he able to take a good shot, get up, and not lose his concentration anymore, he can chase in the latter round. I didn't know that Whitaker was able to do that. Quickly, let's go to Larry in the ring. Ronnie, it ain't no show. You say it's okay. Right, right. Go, Larry. 
All right, thank you very much. Pernell, Pernell, congratulations. And what were you just saying? It isn't over till when? It's not over till we say it's over. That's right. Your corner told you you had to go out and knock him out. Did you believe that yourself? Well, I believe what my corner tell me. So, you know, regardless, I wasn't looking for it. You know, I just knew it was going to happen. It was late in the, in, the, in the round. Could you see that he was getting progressively more tired as the fight went along? Well, you know, it turned into a whining situation. I just knew I just had to keep the pressure on him. And uh, with the punches that he was throwing, they really wasn't bothering me. But, you know, um, I just knew it was a matter of time that I reached him. Why were you knocked down? Was it simply being off balance? Were you fighting a fight that you're not used to fighting, having to chase a guy like that off all over the ring? Mostly I was off balance a couple times, and I can't take anything away from my opponent. He came in with a world championship heart. He wanted the title, and uh, he gave me my money's worth for a little while. How ugly of a fight was that? Have you ever been in anything like that as a professional? Well, you know, um, I wouldn't say no. I just can't remember it so far back. But I'd like to thank, to thank the fans around the world for the support. I'd like to thank the favorite network, HBO, for... Uh, I, I understand that this was my 17th or 18th title fight. And, 17, uh, but we're not counting. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but you know, it's been a great relationship between myself and the HBO, and um, it's not over till I say it's over. Talk to us now about Oscar De La Hoya. Does this fight have any reference at all well, to fighting a more classic professional fighter like Oscar De La Hoya? I don't think Oscar De La Hoya is no better than uh, Hurtado. Matter of fact, I think they, they're pretty much similar. But uh, if the student doesn't bring the teacher an apple, I must punish him. But like I always say, Larry, he's the boy wonder, but I'm Batman. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's... Here's Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar, give us your thoughts now that it's clear that you two are going to meet. Give us your thoughts about the fight. Well, first of all, about the fight, I want to congratulate uh, Sweepy Whitaker for another great performance. He, uh, he just showed the boxing fan that uh, that's what a true champion is all about. You know, he, he, of course, I mean, we have to admit he was having a, a bit difficulty in this fight, which we all didn't expect. But uh, a great champion always comes back, wins a fight impressively, and that's what he did tonight. And I feel that uh, April 12th is going to be a good show. People are going to get their money's worth. Um, once again, I'll be in the best shape of my life. He'll be in the best shape of his life, and the best man is going to win. Were you in the best shape of your life for this fight, or was it simply how awkward and fast your well, opponent was? Well, this is one of my finest training camps I've had. You know, it wasn't particular the fight. So you don't want to blame it on, on no, taking this finish. guy lightly. I want to finish. First. Oh, okay, go ahead. I want to say you finished the show. Take, I didn't take. The, um, I didn't look past the title. You know, I knew there was something bigger and better beyond him, so I had to go through him. I couldn't go over or around the opponent. I had to go through him to get to Oscar. Oscar deserves the title, the title shot, but who's, I'm still the champion, and April 12th, the, the, this is the, the best fa The fact that you say you got in top shape, I'm always in top because shape. Because you wanted to fight Oscar, did that help you come through in the championship rounds, the, the, no, the end of the fight? No, not at all. I give Oscar a lot of credit. No, I'm Oscar. talking about tonight. Oh, oh my opponent. Help? See, I don't want to take, see y'all brought in uh, Oscar. I don't want to take anything away from my opponent. He fought a terrific fight. He was a champion. I mean, he, was, he, he gave me all I, I could handle for, uh, for 11 rounds. All right, thank you very much, Pernell. You went out like a champ, and we're going back to Jim and George. One thing about Pernell, he's never had a moment of trouble in the ring, regardless of whether he's been down or anything like that. In his view, he wins just about every round. That kind of confidence will serve him well going into the De La Hoya bout. In my mind, he was whipped from pillow to post tonight. He ended up uh, retrieving and winning this thing by knockout. If it had gone to the, to the judges, I can't see him being a winner tonight. But you know, Sweet Pea, if we took those three judges' scorecards up there and showed him that he was trailing on all three cards, he would probably contend that we fabricated them, right? No doubt about it, because this guy's got a lot more heart than I thought. Whitaker has got more heart probably than any fighter in the, in the ring today. He'll need more than heart, as great as he is, to beat Oscar De La Hoya. Yeah, I think he has a little more than heart, too, now. <laughs> George, thanks very much. Looking forward to seeing you again soon. Larry, very quickly, final comments. We've got to move right along and get on to the Dennis Miller Live show coming up, but uh, there's room here for you to say one thing well. Well, what I would say is if that Hurtado would have won this fight, it would have been as if Sir Isaac Newton saw an apple fall up 
from that tree. But the apple did fall down, and it came down on him from Pernell Whitaker. For George Foreman, Larry Merchant, Harold Letterman, and Hector Garcia, I'm Jim Lampley saying goodbye from Atlantic City. Presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions.